What is up guys, Coach Joe here at Elite FTS with the man, the myth, the legend. We got Dave Tate, we also have my good friend Juju Mufu here. And in this video, we're gonna be going over three exercises that you probably aren't doing, but you should, okay? He's got a lot of wisdom, a lot of years under the belt here, so I'm intrigued to pick his brain on if he can give me three exercises uh, that I'm not currently doing in my training that you guys probably aren't doing, what would they be? So Dave, what's the first one? We're gonna go with hanging leg raise because that happens to be the one exercise that everybody that comes out to visit, it usually ends up being a default, like you should be doing this, but you're not. <laughs> and it's never for the reasons that people think. Okay. Because when you think hanging leg raises, people are thinking it's an ab exercise, which it is. <laughs> but what I'm looking at it more is, you know, kind of distracting the spine, elongating the hip flexors, mm -hmm. and opening things up a little bit more before you train, because everything that you're doing it's compression, 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 right? So a lot of times, a case in point, a lot of deadlifts, people get stuck here, and they get stuck here, and then they start <clears throat> doing stuff like that where all they have to do is hip flex it in. But if this is all tight, they can't bring it in. Mm -hmm. So how do you open this up, which is an easy way to open it up? There's a lot of stretches, there's a lot of things you can do, but what if you're doing hanging leg raises as part of your warm up, or part of every time you went into the gym? Gotcha. So go ahead. I like the, the loops. There, I also like holding onto the bar for the shoulder distraction as well, but that's not what we're looking for here. So I'd rather have the, so the loops. Here. Yeah. And then I grab yes. up here. Yep, so then go ahead and kick this out a little bit. Now all I'm looking for, to be completely honest, is just this to relax. See, and right there. The big yeah, difference so between that, right? Really tense. So now here, all this is opening up, all this is opening up. So we're gonna start with the knee up first. So just pull the knees up here. Now from here, that's shortening that, right? Which yeah. is not, that's what we don't want. But down here, now you can feel this, where it stretches. Uh -huh. So if you come up again, knee up, you feel where the flex, right? Yep. So now you know what you want to stretch at the bottom when you're down there. Okay. So you just want it to kind of hold. So now the actual ab part where I would start would be here and then just a hip rotation there oh, yeah. and then down, but all the way down into the stretch position. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's two or three reps. What a lot of people do is they'll go here, just do like two reps with the hip rotation. Here, and then down. Here, then down. Keep in mind what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to open this up. Yeah. So when you start doing stuff like that, you're just shortening it all up, gotcha. right? The end goal of this would be able to bring your feet all the way up, kick the top bar. You should be able to do that, right? Um, you yeah, have right there, probably tight from yesterday. Right there, right. That's, <laughs> go ahead and get down now. That would be the end goal to uh -huh. where you want to be able to be because now what that's doing it's, it's opening the hip flexors, but up here, we're also starting to open up the low back as well. Yeah. But that's the, I just gave you a very long progression for people. Uh -huh. for, for you, just the hanging would be something that you could do from what we saw yesterday. Just come in, hang for a little bit. Yeah. You know, and then maybe a couple of knee ups, and then that's a test. Go up and kick it like the first time, <clears throat> say you did this yesterday, the first time I was like, ooh, man, that don't feel right. Yeah because you know it feels smooth. Uh -huh. When it feels right, you're done. Gotcha. So then you go on to the next thing because mm -hmm. it's the warm up. What I do with the sneaky part of it with uh, younger athletes, power lifters, I put this as part of their warm up, say three sets of five on just the knee up, hang, mm -hmm. up, knee up, hang, up, knee up. That way when they skip their abs later, I kind of stuck it in. Oh so yeah, yeah. You, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I, <laughs> so it's only been recently that I'm telling people that the main goal is what mm -hmm. I just told you. Yeah, it's funny like hopping up there how tense I already was and I thought like if you didn't tell me to do that I would have just kept moving from where I started versus actually relaxing yes. So it has been counterproductive For me to just hop up there and do that. So I'm learning to just kind of relax now with these Is there a point where you would take these off and hang from the bar or is that a completely different type of thing? To me, it's a completely different thing But yes, there okay. is because just hanging from a bar if you have my shoulders are a mess, so for me it would be a problem because it's just going to jam yeah. the joint up. So if the joint has the movement to be able to do that, most definitely, because now then what you're doing is the same thing you're doing here, but you're doing it with the shoulder complex. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yes, there is that benefit, but with the people that I'm around and I know, you know, they're usually mm -hmm. way over 220, 230, 240, yeah, this fine. becomes more problematic to where that's actually jamming them up more than yeah. the other. So. I don't want to see, I'm yeah, dancing yeah. my way around the, I'm, I'm being a politician with the answer, yeah, yeah. but it does depend. I see where you're coming from. You know, the more jacked person, like 
Well, he'll tell you because there's probably sometimes he can do that based upon his body weight. Other times yeah. he's like, you know what? This is just too much mm -hmm. stress if he's heavier. So do you like, do these? How, would you train these? Uh, well, I mean, if your goal is to learn a backflip, that's one of the best accessory exercises really? you can do. Yeah. Okay. yeah gymnasts, dude, oh, they cool. live on die by this exercise when they're starting out. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? This is the, one of their core movements in really? terms of conditioning that strength they need yeah. for all the flips and stuff they do. But I mean, from what you're saying with the difference between hanging here and here is it depends also on your goal, not just how big you are, because mm -hmm. if you're focusing on your grip or even like getting the straps to hold you in and your shoulder being dislocated, if your goal is to stretch this out and work your abs, but you're focusing on this, this is, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, well, I mean, so I prefer to do them with the elbows almost exclusively. Yeah. And if I'm going to be working this dislocation, I'm going to do that as a separate exercise. Gotcha. That's what I do. So, yeah. so I could use this before my workout, like before my main stuff, mm -hmm. I can hop up and I can kind of hang and stretch a little bit. And then would you ever incorporate it later on in a workout? Well, most definitely right. for the back end, for you personally, yeah. or people that are in the same level that mm -hmm. you're at personally, I'd put it at the beginning as like a, a diet, you have a warm up, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no perfect warm up. There's only the perfect warm up for that day. So I would use it. There, there's certain things that you'll do when you walk into the gym to determine how tight you are, how ready you are. How, I would use this as one of those things. Mm -hmm. Like to jump up there and like, okay, this is cool. You hit it, this boom, yeah. done. Yeah. You get up there and don't feel right. Oh, maybe I probably need to do this, right? Gotcha. Maybe there's some other things that you'll do. Little arm swings or whatever it is. Like you're already, most people are already doing this now. Uh -huh. Like when you walk in the gym, you might walk around a little bit mm -hmm. and say, you know, my hips feel good. Mm -hmm. You're yourself diagnosing what needs to be yeah. done. This would be one of the metrics to put in there. Okay. But yes, in the, the back yeah. end, especially on a heavy compression day, uh -huh. it would probably be a good idea to put gotcha. it in there. Yeah, I mean, guys, I honestly have not done these in years. I don't know why I got away from them as much as I did, but it was kind of interesting. This is the first thing, like right when I asked him this question, boom, that's what he said immediately. So I think... Uh, from what we noticed, and we'll talk about another video going on kind of with my, my hips, my pelvis, and my back a little bit, this is something I definitely want to start throwing in, especially uh, for, uh, like he said, a large compression type day, and just a warm up and a tool for diagnostics for myself. So that's the first one. Now let's move over to the second one. All right, guys. So second exercise is a squat, and we were kind of talking back and forth, and we we're like, do we really want to use a squat? But then when he explained why, it was not for the reason that I was thinking. So Dave, kind of Talk them through what you're telling me before we got on camera. Okay. I think every every athlete, every every person that trains should squat. We, doesn't matter unless well, what, if they're a wheelchair athlete, probably not. Right. Yeah. The only one that I would say shouldn't squat. Everybody else should have squats in their program. Not for the reasons like most people think. And when I say squat, when I'm talking about is a sit to a stand. So the the first thing that you're taught. If you're ever in the hospital for a long period of time or have surgery, the first thing they want to teach you is how to get up out of bed, mm -hmm. right? First thing that's before anything else, you know, sit to the side, feet on the floor, make sure your feet are planted. It's funny because the nurses are better at teaching the squat than most of the trainers that I've seen huh. teach the squat, hmm. right? But they would call it in their world a sit to stand, right? Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. That is, it's a box squat. So the box squats can be implemented in the exercise or in, the, in a program from a bodybuilding perspective, powerlifting perspective. It shouldn't always be a box squat. All those disclaimers are what those disclaimers are. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about is just the ability to go from a sit to a stand, yeah. right? So what happens typically is, say most people, if they're, well, if they're reclining at home, you know, they're here. And then they're, they're doing crap like this, mm -hmm. you know, to get up or crap like this or getting out of the to getting off the toilet. You know, it's always this, you wipe your ass, then you twist. Yeah. yeah. Twist? Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> so you, 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 yeah, you no. wipe your ass, well, you wipe your ass, right? And then when you go to get up, how do most people get up? Well, I don't know. I never observed someone else. Why well, I, I get it. A crap. <laughs> let's just say they're getting off a couch. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's. Twisting? No, no, no. It's not. It's, it's leaning forward and up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Or it's grabbing the the hand. We're not on the toilet, but say the Reaching the, the chair yeah. here. Right. Yeah. So optum, you know, here is a sit to a sit to stand. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. It's just the ability to be able to sit in a braced position here, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you should even be able to drive in a brace position. Most people don't understand that brace position. I'm not talking about not being able to breathe, but somewhat tense. Yeah. Uh, the driving is here, yeah. right? Everything's here. <laughs> so just the ability to be able to, to do this mm -hmm. here. Right. I'm actually pretty uh, impressed by how explosive. I was going to say, you see how fast. Yeah, I know. It's like he's been doing it for a million, few years. Yeah, millions or so. of reps, right? <laughs> but where this begins, though, with so let's, this is how it should be done in training. You know, yeah. if it say it's bodybuilding, it might be a little bit closer, and it's going to be down, slight pause, and up, not crashing on it. You can do a touch and go, but it has to be controlled. Yeah. Or you can go longer pause, but you're still keeping isometrically mm -hmm. contracted, not ground. Yeah. You know, not You want to make sure here. the toilet seat isn't too dirty before you commit. Yes. So w whenever the box squat is in the program, you know, bodybuilding like you guys did yesterday, it was just a slight touch, yeah. you know, here with the closer stance. Yeah. You know, powerlifting might come out a little wider, wherever it's going to be. And so down. What I, with the sit to stand, I like to have the position of the knee over the ankle. I'm not saying that's how everybody should squat. You know, if you're a competitive powerlifter and you squat midfoot to knee or or knee to midfoot, mm -hmm. that's where the box squat should be. If you're a competitive lifter, it should match where that knee is stacked with that. But so here it would be down here yeah. with that. Where, where I'm going is, say you're sitting at home, you're at work. Don't use your desk, hands here, mm. right? Because see now, remember here, here's what I'm telling you to do. Here, see how all that's stable, all that's neutral. Yeah. It's not here, it's not here. Desk, Yeah. see where we're at, Yeah. right? <laughs> so this sit to a stand should be part of what somebody's doing all the time. So in a training program, if it's a squat, Right? Yeah. Maybe start your warm up sets. If you're going to go close stand squats, they're going to be here. Do a couple just using the box to kind of reinforce mm -hmm. that position. We kick it out. Okay. Gotcha. That way the pattern's established. Kick it out and then do the free squats. Yeah. So we're kind of taking it more of a, instead of like thinking strictly power lifting and sport, more of a longevity aspect kind of with this. And it's like everybody should be incorporating this because. Uh, the benefits they can get long term. Yes, but let me this. circle it back though to powerlifting and sport. Yeah. You jack your back up, how many weeks do you have to take off? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and let's say it's football, let's say it's Olympic lifting, you jack your back up, how many weeks do you have to take off? Mm -hmm. Now, what if you jack your back up getting off of the toilet? Or you jack your back off twisting to get out of the car? Uh -huh. You, you see what yeah. I'm saying? So take this away from the squat yeah. and bring it back to the sit to a stand. Mm -hmm. And then you see where I'm going. Yeah. So it is full circle. Mm -hmm. So it's not where the box squat gets this bad reputation because of the origins and all this stuff that kind of goes along with that. But they're not understanding the true origin. The true, true, true yeah, origin yeah. is a nurse helping yeah. somebody learn yeah. how to get out of bed after they had a massive heart attack interesting right yeah, because yeah. you have to be able to sit to, you have to be able to stand before you can walk yeah. right you have to be able to walk before you can shit you know because yeah, you yeah. can't move this yeah so you just take it back and so that's the regression awesome yeah no that's great so we just want to put a different spin on it probably than what you're used to uh, but this is something that I've been incorporating more into my training and I do absolutely love this exercise for training aspects but now I have a whole different appreciation for the sit to stand aspect that kind of, like Dave said, goes full circle uh, for everything in life, basically, and, and staying in it for the long haul. So awesome uh, exercise number two. Now let's roll into exercise number three. All right. Exercise number three is what, Dave? Skull crushers, tricep extensions. What other names do they have? Um, I think that's it. That's good enough. <laughs> Anyhow, most people from what I see when they're doing the skull crushers, is they're going they're either going way 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 back and all this is okay they're all different variations or some going for some reason like behind their head mm -hmm. and then strengthening out like pushing out yeah, like yeah. it's a weird behind the heck press <laughs> the problem with that is when i'm looking at something i'm looking at it from a lever system you know how much stress is being put you know on the on the lab the joint mm -hmm. and then how big the arms are and then what's the point yeah so what 
we're going to show is a way to take that tricep extension, modify it a little bit, right? So you're going to be able to use more weight. I'm not going to lie about that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more look more like a close grip bench press. Okay. At least for the heavier sets, you can always do down sets and then take it back a little bit more. But just look at the risk benefit of the different exercises. And if it looks like you, most people understand levers, right? Mm -hmm. If it looks like this is n <laughs> Yeah. really imbalanced as far as how it's impacting the force on that lever uh -huh. modify it for the heavier sets and then you can go lengthen it for lighter stuff mm -hmm. to where with a tricep extension with an easy curl bar or barbell let's modify it then if you want to go way back in here let's do that with a lighter dumbbell let's do that with cables like we did in the other video to kind of get back into that stretch mm -hmm. just from joint longevity you're still feeling the whole range of motion but it's over two movements instead of trying to accomplish everything in one movement because can you really get a full range of motion in a tricep exercise anyhow of the elbow joint that's the other thing because muscle kind of shortens the range of motion right yeah because yeah. it's going to get all are, yeah. so exactly what is range of motion when you're talking about that as well mm -hmm. all right so go ahead and do it how most let's see can we show how people do it wrong so yeah. i can see so nice. way back behind your head. Right. That's almost yeah, good. so some people actually have them start here and say just go from there, right? Which his triceps are shot from earlier, so that's really hard for him to do. So bring it way back like this, it'll Oof. help you a lot of it. So take it down, I got it, I'll tell you what, take yeah. some of the weight. So keep your elbows back like that. So what some people will want is for you to stay here the whole time, okay. right? So now, look, remember when I was talking about the stress on the elbows? Yeah. Look at how hard that stress would be on the elbows and the yeah. shoulders. So now if we take it here, tuck the elbows a little bit, and then just try to bring it down to maybe chin or mouth. That's probably better, no, that's, yeah, right there. Now, see the triceps are still loaded. Mm -hmm. It may not be that big range of motion that we had with the other one. Man, I but, stretch. Yeah, but you're starting to see there's less stress on the elbow too. Yeah. So if you need to modify even more, you can go upper pack here, okay. and it's still yeah. wrist behind elbow, uh -huh. right? Which is still getting it in there and working yeah. it the way it should. I'm not sure if you guys can see with the camera, but the first one we did, were, which was the quote unquote incorrect way that we were demonstrating, is just the way the leverages look was just bad. Yeah. Like if you Let's, could just we'll tell. bring the camera around, yeah, and then bring it back. I, I'll take almost all the weight. So just bend it down. So you see right that there, is stress here, and it's putting it on. It is just his, his wrist, and even the like, shoulders, right? Yeah. yeah. Compared to if we go here, chin. Yeah. There, and then up. And, then and even from a specificity standpoint, with uh, strength sport athletes, this is going to be mimicking more of a bench than it would be if you I'm did, good, good. you know, that first one too. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, I mean, if we're really going to talk specificity of a bench, it's just really, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just, it's, it's closer, right? right? But if anybody's doing tricep extensions for specificity of a bench, I'd question their specificity. Yeah, yeah. They're doing it more for hypertrophy, trying yeah. to bring up a weak point. Mm -hmm. So with that being the case, it's how can you best target the muscle yeah. with the least amount of joint force mm -hmm. possible. Yeah. So that's, that's how I kind of look at it. Now, if it is real short like that, I would put another movement in, you know, to be able to get lighter to get that full range. Uh -huh. Okay. So you're saying on a, just to recap here. Yes. Because I know they're watching and I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, want to yeah, recap yeah, too yeah, for yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. You're saying that your levers are different. Everyone's levers are different. Everyone's needs are different. But you're, you're just saying to play with the angle that's coming down and find what's best for you. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't get locked in this thinking like this is the correct way. Because, because it's somebody close. says so. Because someone said you have to uh, crush your skull. Yes. And I'm sure there's studies that are going to show if you go way back in there, there's going to be more activation because... Yeah greater range of motion and all this other stuff right but right. you know <laughs> you just yeah. look the anecdote simply, means you know? evidence it's yeah like i mean that, it's kind of yeah. a mixed type yeah. thing yeah. and i'm not saying they're wrong but what i'm saying is we, we're, we got we're adding now we're adding load uh -huh. right so that changes a lot of those dynamics so go ahead and kick this down real quick on the floor so let's go back to just something like uh let's go 15. take that just one arm and then go back lay down 
and then support the bicep. Come way back here, way back here, way yeah. back here. Now back here, now go through. Now see we're getting that range of motion that they were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. And there's less joint stress mm -hmm. because the weight's lighter, right? Oh. And you're getting that big range of motion. So that's what I'm saying, you gotta complement the movement yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're trying to do something like gotcha. this. Yeah. Let me try the other ones. And so the, the, the bang I would have on this one is that's great for the range of motion, but you're not gonna be able to use the weight, weight heavy enough. Yeah. here. Yeah. So let's, let's find the balance. Yeah. Take that from you. Oh, jeez. Okay, thank you. What was that? <laughs> your skull, your brain? All right, guys, there you have it. Three exercises that you probably aren't doing that you should be uh, from my man Dave Tate, kind of laying down the foundation on that one. So first off, I just want to say thank you so much yes, for the you. exercises and uh, just have me here. I've learned so much. Literally everything that we have done in the last two days is just been making my brain go in all different places as well as my body i'm very sore especially my triceps and my, my, my legs up, yeah. yeah i'm just an upper body that's just here floating uh so make sure you are following dave on all the platforms in elite fts okay we also have juju mufu who is no stranger to the channel make sure you're following him and support them in all of the ways that you can it means a lot to me uh so thank you guys and guys stay a lean mean strength machine catch you guys next time peace